Welcome to Thrive in Design, a podcast about making money and beautiful interiors as it relates to product-based businesses in the interior design industry. Each week, we'll discuss innovative strategies on how to approach product development and design sales in a shifting market. I'm your host, Nicole lachey Ben. Welcome back to the Thrive in Design podcast, your go-to source for exploring the latest trends and innovations in interior design. Today, I am thrilled to introduce a true visionary in the world of home decor. Our guest today is Norman Wyatt Jr., an esteemed artist and designer who has been shaping the home decor industry for over two decades. Hailing from Virginia, Norman finds inspiration in the rich hues, textures, and natural beauty of his surroundings. His portfolio ranges from misty coastal scenes to eclectic abstracts and earthy landscapes, showcasing a remarkable breadth of painting styles and subjects. In 2017, Norman established his own home decor brand, Norman Wyatt Home, after years of creating trend-forward wall decor. Recently, he made waves by partnering with Stylecraft to launch a complete Norman Wyatt home decor lifestyle collection. This includes everything from wall decor and lamps to furniture, mirrors, pillows, and accessories, all designed by Norman himself. Norman currently resides in Virginia with Makita, his wife of 25 years, and their three creative children, Elisha, a graphic artist and aspiring fashion designer, Joshua, an animator and music producer, and Lydia, a ballerina and watercolorist. Join us as we dive into Norman's journey from his artistic aspirations to his latest ventures in home decor. Get ready to be inspired. Welcome to the show, Norman. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Me too. I'm so excited. And I was really excited to cross paths with you at this past a high point market in yes. a spring 2024. And here we are on this podcast episode. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So let's dive in with sharing a little bit about your journey. I know you've been in the game for over two decades, but can you share what initially inspired you to become an artist and how did your journey begin? So I literally have been creating art since I was, man, three or four, you know, and artwork has always been just part of my life. Um, I remember going to the to the elementary school when I was in second grade and they didn't have an art teacher. So to keep um, the gifted kids going or to keep them uh, you know, interested and actively, work, actively working in what they created or what they were doing, they sent me to the high school to take art with the seniors and the juniors. So here I was a uh, eight year old in a classroom full of, you know, 17, 18 year olds doing artwork. So I just knew from, you know, early childhood that art was my major thing. I, you know, I did well academically and all that too, but artwork was just my, my passion. So um, when it came down to, you know, going to high school, being in gifted arts and winning awards and, you know, um, different uh, competitions and things like that, being in newspapers and just always having some type of, um, you know, accolades and being a fine artist, I knew that I wanted to pursue fine art as a career. Yeah. Um, you know, it just was something that was always in me uh, from childhood and there was nothing that I ever thought of doing else, you know, anything else besides doing artwork. Yeah, that's awesome. Now yeah. that's making Thank me want to sign my, up my son for some music classes in high school. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> we got to I mean, start you now. <laughs> I mean, if it's there, you know, the more uh, exposure and the more, you know, that they're putting it into that environment, the better for them. Yeah. And one thing I was really intrigued um, about from our last conversation is just how you have approached art in a very innovative way. And you've been able to really make it a business like that has brought in tons of revenue for you. Because I think a lot of the times when people think of artists, the main yes. thing that people think is like starving artists. Starving artists. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and that does not have to be everybody's story. So over the last 20 years as a fine artist, what strategies have you really used to to really make your art a, into a business and um, a source for revenue for yourself and your family? So I have been through that starving artist stage. Um, you know, a lot of people use that in a derogatory way, mm-hmm. almost looking down on the fact that you're trying to do something creative for a career. I've had family members tell me, you know, you got to let that go. got to take care of your family. Um, you know, you have to have a strong income. 
But for me, I would say my faith is really strong, right? So it starts with that. So my faith and believing, first of all, that it was possible. And I knew that these gifts that were put inside of me were not just for fun or just just to be there. I knew it was something I was supposed to use them for. The big question was, how do I turn this into a career? How do I make a, a good living off of it? How do I make an income off of creating? So um, my story is, is kind of like a book, but I actually uh, started off as an art teacher for elementary kids, uh, K through four. Mm -hmm. And while I was teaching, I literally had um, a, a table in my classroom. And if there weren't any classes going on, if I had a long break or one of those days where there were pretty much like one class, I, I was just constantly painting and creating, just always painting and, and, and trying to keep my skills going and just trying to, you know, get what was out of me, you know, what was inside out of me on paper or on canvas or whatever. And after a while, I had a huge portfolio of artwork that I had done at school while I was teaching. And, you know, I knew of uh, art publishing and things like that because of uh, being a picture frame while, while I was in college. Mm -hmm. And um, I literally knew that some artists were making a living off of reproductions and the whole, you know, art publishing world. So mm -hmm. I did some research and looked around at a lot of different publishers. And then I finally submitted, you know, to a company. I got turned down the first time. I was like, wow, you know. Um, kept working on some new stuff, maybe like four or five months later, submitted to another company and they immediately signed me. It was almost like they were waiting on something new and fresh. And they told me like, you know, the timing was just so perfect that I, when I submitted, so I got a contract. So, um, as far as like making a living off of it, that was my first chance, um, or my first opportunity to see that, you know, you can make royalties off of artwork. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the same company offered me a separate licensing uh, art licensing contract and they exposed me to the fact that you have companies and manufacturers that are looking for artwork and designs and patterns to use for their products and they will pay you another royalty so you know that first uh, that initial art publishing contract in 2004 um, opened my eyes to the possibilities yeah. um, to fast forward it after years of doing that and working with one company exclusively and, you know, I had so much art inside of me and so many ideas that one company couldn't contain what I had inside of me. I realized, you know what, I need to adjust my contract and redo my overall uh, plan of how I want to do business. And since I do so much art and so many different looks and styles, you know, it should be possible for me to work with multiple companies at the same time. So I went from one art publishing contract to at one point, maybe like five or six different you know, affiliations with different publishers, putting my art in different places all simultaneously. And I just had exclusive by design contracts with them, which I literally, honestly, I prayed and asked God for insight and vision on how to do this business and how to do something different and how to make sure that I was covered in all ways. So I was getting royalty sometimes, you know, four or five different, uh, four or five different checks and four different, four or five different companies paying me every month at the same time. So, uh -huh. you know, I easily went from, you know, a starving artist to making six figures off of art that I was creating right in my home. Wow. So just, just a new concept, not really new, but just doing something in a different way and have a control of how I wanted to do it. Yeah. So. And so let's stop there real quick for like a quick lesson, because I feel like a lot of people, and I was talking with Stacey Garcia on one of our past episodes, a couple episodes ago, about right. this, about just like licensing in general. But break down the difference between what is a publishing deal and a licensing deal, and like, what is the difference right. between that for you? So our publishing, just like it sounds, um, you will make a, a deal with a company or you have a contract with a company where they literally take your original artwork and reproduce it or mass produce it in different ways. Um, their job is to sell it, place it in stores, hotels, wherever artwork is needed, online sales. And then they will pay the artist a royalty or percentage based on the sales for the month. And some companies pay quarterly. So you pretty much get a percentage of everything that you create with that company. When they sell it, they pay your percentage. So um, that's, that's the whole art side. And it's different levels of companies. Some of them are selling to, you know, big box stores where it's a much smaller percentage that you get or a smaller mm -hmm. amount. But then the volume is there usually where a store might, it might be 1,800 stores or 2,000 stores and you still end up 
you know, selling four or 5,000 reproductions at once. And then wow. you have some other companies where it might be more of a higher end um, brand where they sell to smaller places or more boutique type places or, um, you know, higher end stores where a large order might be 300. Mm -hmm. But then those prints, those prints or those reproductions on canvas or whatever might be selling for five, six hundred, seven hundred, a thousand dollars. So your percentage is higher. So it still balances out. Uh, product licensing is similar to the artwork, but um, companies that manufacture all types of products that you could imagine. Uh, and a lot of stuff you can't even imagine that artwork yeah. is needed for, but rugs, lamps. Well, that's, well, yeah, lampshades, uh, shower curtains, uh, tablecloths, textiles. It's just, it's, it's so broad. And um, these companies have a lot of times they have in-house studios and in-house mm -hmm. artists that create for them on a regular basis. But then they also look, uh, are always constantly looking for new outside designs, new fresh ideas that their designers aren't doing. And some of it is just, we need, they need more and more. So um, just like the similar to the art publishing contract, these manufacturers will use your artwork, your patterns, your designs, whatever it is, um, use it on their products and then pay you a royalty or percentage of everything that your product, uh, that your artwork is on. Yeah. So um, usually it could be monthly royalties. It could be quarterly. It just depends on the contract. So imagine having the art sales, the fine art sales going, and then the licensing or the product licensing sales going at the same time. And then yeah. imagine having thousands of images that are out in the market that you've done over the years, constantly being shopped and used and, picked up so it, you can the artist can make a really good living off of the whole you know licensing and publishing side yeah if they know about it that's the big yeah guess. if they know about Just it because about it. <laughs> that's the part if they know about it and I hope that right. many artists and designers listening to this episode get inspired because I know just in my conversations with you and Stacey I'm like I've I've been on honestly sleeping on myself um even this weekend I was like rehanging artwork in my house and most of the artwork in my home I've done myself. I've only had okay. two prints that I bought of my favorite okay. artists, awesome. um, Degas and Monet. Like those are my favorite. I love impressionism. And right. so those are the only prints and then everything else I've done myself and I've just kept things in my home. So even our conversation, I'm like, I think yeah. I've been sleeping on on things. It, but it was You'd just be surprised like, how many creatives, how knowing. many artists, you'd be surprised how many <laughs> artists and creatives and instructors and professors and, and just uh, people in the creative world don't even know about this. And I've been yeah. doing it for 20 years and it's still some artists I've talked to maybe on Instagram or Facebook or something like that and I'll, or LinkedIn and I'll bring it up and they're like, what is that? And it's yeah. just a matter of just, if you don't know anything about exposed. it, how can you be involved, you know? For so. sure. Yeah. Well, I hope many people hear this episode and they get inspired <laughs> for sure. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's go into this amazing uh, collaboration that you just did with Stylecraft. And I'm so excited that I got to be at the launch of this collection. Oh, and this was like your first big, big collection of interior products. So yes. tell me, what was your inspiration behind that collection? And tell us more about what that process looked like to go from just sketches all the way to hundreds. I think you said over 100 SKUs of different products. I, I ended up having 153 in my launch, yeah. so... That's not, that's kind of unusual, but mm -hmm. so it's amazing because my many years of training and, you know, taking art direction and having to constantly evolve and reinvent myself, providing artwork for the decor industry really helped me when it came down to this whole process of designing products. Um, so like I said, I've had some licensing deals in the past where companies have used my artwork for various products, uh, dower curtains, I did a, some rugs, some bedding, but this is my first, ten, uh, first time actually creating and designing specifically for this whole lifestyle collection and for these products. And now we're talking about products like furniture, chairs, sofas, lamps, uh, uh, mirrors, sideboards, dressers, accessories, uh, gift boxes, just, it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as far as, um, you know, my inspiration, my whole goal was, okay, it's very rare to find a fine artist that's doing this type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, it's, it would be an interior designer or a product, uh, product designer 
or you know someone like a celebrity or someone that has some type of following or a big uh, a, a big presence in the home decor market or even like a real estate or anything like that just design in general um and a lot of times they curate or they work with a designer or an artist or someone that's working with them to translate their ideas into these products, you know, the right. drawings, the sketches, the, the renderings, and then the products are made. But for me, you know, everything was coming from me. And yeah. so my goal was, okay, I'm a fine artist first, but for years I've had all these thoughts of furniture and lamps, and I've always wanted to design all these different products, but, you know, didn't really have the access or the opportunity. So I was trying to make sure, okay, if I create this collection, I want people to know that I'm a fine artist, but I don't want everything to look like it's all fine art. I don't want, you know, patterns and color and uh, shapes and everything to look like it's too eclectic and too uh, artistic. I still want it high end modern design with a slight artistic flair. You mentioned Stacey Garcia, yeah. mutual friend. Uh, she described my look as refined artistry. So. You know, it really helped me define where I was going with everything because, like I said, I wanted to show that it's still modern. It's on trend. Matter of fact, ahead of trend mm -hmm. and, and something that, you know, the average client or customer can put in their home and be excited to put in their home, but also not too out there that it would uh, limit this, the the reach, if that makes sense. Yeah. So so uh, the years of of sketching and drawing abilities with the fine art really helped um, when it came down to designing the products because being a fine artist first, I didn't need anyone to have anyone to translate what I was thinking about for a lamp or a sofa or a dresser. If I had this idea or an idea of how I wanted a coastal lamp to look, I could draw it out myself and play around with the sketch until I had the mm -hmm. idea. And it literally helped out so much because it was a whole step uh, removed when it came down to product development from uh, style with Stylecraft, they could take my full, uh, full advanced high end uh, fine art or my drawing of the product, and mm -hmm. in details with all the shading and the and the the texture and everything of how I wanted to look with my details and all my description of the materials and things like that, and go straight from that to the graphic rendering right to actual tooling or the sampling or the making of the product. So it just yeah. So that was why, because it was a whole step removed, I was able to get a hundred plus products launched because I just kept put I kept putting out products and ideas and concepts that the CEO loved, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Let's make all of them." So yeah, I love it. It was a blessing. So all those years of training, twenty years of fine art training, just really helped you know create this system of working and creating and designing and developing these concepts, and, and to allow me to get a lot of things created yeah. uh, in a smaller amount of time than normal. Yeah. And so for you, do you feel like there were any challenges in that process in launching 150 plus, um, you know, products in this collection? You know, you you are a brilliant mind in like creating the sketches oh, thank you. and thank you, you had an amazing partnership in, you know, of a company that had the bandwidth and capacity to just like bring those sketches right. to life. But were there any challenges along the way that you can share in that process? So I've honestly probably already designed 400 products. Oh and my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, the rest of them are just in the process of being made and going through. When I, when I get going, it's, just, it's, just, it's nonstop. The flow just keeps going. Um, the challenges, I will say, so imagine being a fine artist and you make this deal. And, you know, I met with the CEO and head of product development and a few other people. And, you know, after finally discussing the overall plan of let's do this, let's create a complete lifestyle collection and brand it with your photo, your logo, and, you know, make sure that we, you know, uh, put out a large collection. The next step was, okay, start designing. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I had never designed lamps before. Uh, I didn't have a lot of uh, instruction on how I can design, how should you design a lamp? I didn't go to um, to college or any type of, I didn't have any type of training on product development mm -hmm. um, or, you know, uh, AutoCAD or any of those type of things, drafting. I literally was a fine artist and mm -hmm. I just had lots of vision, lots of ideas, lots of concept. 
So the biggest challenge was, you know, when it was finally time to draw or sketch out a sideboard or a lamp or a, or a coffee table or whatever it was, it was my own my own challenge of how do I do this? You know, yeah. they showed me a few examples of how things were laid out and designed, mm -hmm. but the rest of it was, you know, here you have the opportunity to create anything that your mind can think of <laughs> and we'll make it. So yeah. the big challenge was, okay, it's like, I where do you even started. start? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I remember just my first sketches literally were, you know, pretty simple and I was just trying to figure it out. But I literally started getting the flow of it and understanding, okay, the more detail and the best that I'm able to show my vision and my concept, then they can, we can eliminate a lot of redrawing, redrawing and resketching and starting over. So I started to get a lot more elaborate and a lot more detail and, um, you know, try to perfect my look of the sketches. Mm -hmm. But the biggest challenge is, like I said, I'm, I, the other day I was in the house and my wife was looking at me like I was crazy because I told her I'm sitting here in my head trying to visualize an entire room setting yeah. in my head before I start sketching out the the sofa, the table, the sideboard, the pottery, the accessories, the lamp, mm -hmm. you know, in my head. So that could be challenging because having so much in front of you that you're able to do, now you have to try to control and narrow down and manage what you put out too. Yeah. But and, um and does like a and and because this is a lifestyle collection, are you ever imagining like whose lifestyle that you're designing for? You know what I mean? Like a target um, audience almost. Yeah. So that's a good question too. Um I I want I want people I, my main customer is I want someone, you know, that is just looking for something stylish and unique, but I want to reach everybody, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to be able to find something they like within my collection, you know? So similar to when I was doing fine art and art publishing for 20 years, a lot of artists um, kind of fade out over time mm -hmm. because a lot of time it's a lot of changing of trends and subject matter, colors and all that. And, it's a lot to keep up with if you want to stay relevant or even stay within the in the business and to stay in front of the art buyers. Um, but yeah, so I try to constantly create and I'm thinking ahead of time of, you know, how my design will work in someone's home. So if I'm doing a coastal collection, I'm doing some creative coastal uh, designs. My goal is to reach someone that's tired of seeing the same coastal stuff that they see everywhere. Yeah. Same thing with a sofa or uh, someone trying to decorate their living space or their living room or their den or whatever. I want someone to say, I like this. I've seen something similar before, but this is unique. This is different. Mm -hmm. I, I want this one because it's a little different, something there and I like differently, you know? And that's, that's hard when it's so much out. I mean, when I, you went to high point, it's yes. so much out. You need, <laughs> you literally need probably a month to walk around and see everything really. Yes. You know? And it, the show was there for a week, but you, or less than a week, but you really need a whole month to see every showroom and look at everything. Yeah, so it's so much art. <laughs> oh my God, it's just so much out there. But to have anything that's noticeable and unique and to the point where it gets some type of notif uh, some type of recognition of, wow, this is, this is different here. You know, it's yeah. very exciting and, and lets you know that you have something that you, you know, that you're working towards something that could be successful. So but yeah, I am thinking of when I'm designing and creating, I'm constantly thinking of someone else's home, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. And yeah, will yeah. someone walk around and will they walk past the lamp and then go back and say, whoa, you know, that and was... this is different, you know? Yeah. So that's my, that. that's my goal when I'm creating, just trying to make sure it's something slightly unique and interesting that makes the person have to have it, if that makes sense. Yeah, some state statement pieces that you know add some interest to the room and I love that especially in residential design I know right. when I was first getting started in the interior design industry which was high school I interned at a residential um, design firm and all okay. of the clients there they loved like having a board of all the materials and finishes of what was in their home because it, right. it was like a conversation started like oh I have this like um I don't know, Philip Jeffries wall covering or, oh, I have this, right? It was almost like 
here's my like Louis Vuitton designer board of what I have in okay. my home. And right. let's talk about the stories behind all of these brands. So I right. think that still reigns true, especially in residential design, where all of these unique pieces are telling a story behind the artist and telling a story of like why that homeowner or designer chose it to represent, you know, whatever story and lifestyle that they are bringing to life in their home. So I love that. Right. Right. That's cool. Uh, yeah. So as you continue on and I'm sure continue to make like hundreds, if not thousands of more pieces of art and interior products, like what do you see as next for a Norman Wyatt home and in, in your brand? So it's amazing because with Stylecraft, you know, I'm used to there being a limit or amount of space for, you know, this type of artwork or you know these many images for the release or this uh, upcoming trade show for stylecraft i said so how much do i create like you know how many should i do head, the head of product development her name is christy she told me never stop creating and yeah. i was like what do you mean never stop she said <laughs> keep creating just keep creating because what we don't put in this show or this trade show or this launch we're going to be adding con constantly adding more products for the next trade show or for this market. So being a lifestyle brand is not just like, or a collection is not just one, one collection and you're done. They're constantly building up on it and constantly adding and, you know, um, just accenting and putting more items into the collection, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's possible to have thousands of products, you know, within a few years, to be honest. If I did 153 in my first launch, you know, and I have, Three, four, three more trade shows this year. Oh my gosh. Um, it's, I'm excited, but it's also like, you know, constantly creating. Uh, but as far as what's next, so, you know, after work, doing what I've been doing for 20 years, and this being a fine artist, if you see, you know, I have an original painting and behind me, I'm working on this huge painting. I'm constantly creating and painting and working on something. Um, but I started realizing that my, I guess my biggest gift is just vision altogether. You know, mm -hmm. it's just vision. So whatever God puts in my in my head or whatever I can see within my mind, you know, I'm able to bring it to life in some form or, or another. So, so, you know, I started with fine art. That just happened to be where I started. But now I'm excited with the lifestyle collection. And now I'm literally a furniture designer, a lamp designer. Yeah. So with design in general, I have ideas for so many other products. I mean, um, you know, I want to do watches. I love watches. Mm -hmm. I want to do an amazing watch collection with a company uh, or a licensing deal or partnership and some unique, you know, once again, similar to the furniture, just a unique way of showing a watch or creating a watch. Mm -hmm. um, rugs, that's big on my list. Talking to a few companies, but just trying to get that that finalized and trying to get something happening there. But textiles and rugs, I can't wait for that because a lot of my artwork and textures and patterns are perfectly made for textiles and rugs yeah. um, just really excited about that yeah. um you know eyeglasses I and mean, i've been wearing glasses <laughs> since second grade so <laughs> no no fourth grade fourth grade yeah and so matter of fact i have a phone call soon with the eyeglass company trying to trying to see if we can partner with that you know just some unique way of making a, a norman wyatt collection of, of glasses you know mm -hmm. um it's just so much it's so many different things that's out there that you know, jewelry, wear, housewares. Yeah. Uh, I want to even have the Norman Wyatt home uh, pots and pans and air fryers. And yeah. I want to take, I want to once again take something that's out there and put my twist on it or put my color scheme or my texture on it just to bring everything that I'm working on all together into a complete, you know, right. collection of products. Yeah. And don't forget hospitality person. that we talked about before. Hospitality. That's, I can see uh, your, your something like graphic, a beautiful print and like a ballroom oh, of, of a hotel. So add that wallpaper, to all of yes, that. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank all you. the guest room headboards. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just like, um, you know, once, once you understand the possibilities or once you are open to the possibilities, then it's a matter of just making those connections and, you know, making those deals happen or, or even getting the exposure and, and, and getting the opportunity to show what else you can do. I'm mm -hmm. so thankful that the CEO of Stylecraft responded to me on LinkedIn that night that I reached out yeah, and, <laughs> and you know, looked at what I was doing in the fine art field and how much I put out 
and my versatility and say, what do you want to do? Yeah. I'm just so thankful. And I said everything. And it just started from a conversation to a few years going by with COVID and all that, a little setback. And then before I knew it, flying down to Memphis to meet everybody and saying, okay, let's do a full lifestyle collection. So that's amazing. So the other companies out there, it's just a matter <laughs> of those connections. And you just, sometimes you just need an opportunity to show what's inside of you. And exactly. a lot of times that's, you know, that's not always possible, but, you know, hopefully this, what I've released with the lifestyle brand opens up so many more doors and something, it, it'll be something tangible and something pretty much proof of what's there and what's possible for a watch company or for eyeglass company or for wallpaper or, or for all the other things, housewares, all the other things I want to do. I, I'm believing in, well, I'm knowing that the lifestyle collection is visual proof of what else is with, within me besides just fine art, prints, canvas, you know. Absolutely. That's amazing. And for all of the Thank artists you. and designers that are inspired by your story and that are listening, what one piece of advice would you give to them? So if they're interested in doing what I'm doing, I mean, are you, are you referring to like they have a similar, yeah. um, one of the biggest things, and this is something I tell artists, I tell filmmakers, any anybody, once you actually perfect your craft and you literally, you know, have spent years and spent time developing something great, mm -hmm. having something sh to show that's, you know, of what you can do, then you have to show it, you know? Um, <laughs> you have to be actively showing what you're doing on social media, uh, LinkedIn, which is great. As a matter of fact, like I, I keep promoting LinkedIn. I made this huge coll lifestyle collection deal through LinkedIn and, and some other connections through LinkedIn, but constantly showing what you do. If no one can see it, they won't know what's inside of you. They mm -hmm. don't know what you offer. So after you literally perfect and find your your niche and find what you do, or or have perfected that um that unique look that you have, then you have to show it. You have to actively show your work. You know, yeah. if if no one can see it, there's so many talented, gifted people that no one sees what they do. If you go to their to their Instagram or to their site. They may have two or three images up, you know. Mm -hmm. So if so, if you were trying to make a deal like I did, or you were interested in you know expanding into all these other categories, one of the first things that a company is want, wants to know is, let me see your portfolio, let me see exactly. your work, let me see what you have. Yeah. Um, and then you want to you want to think ahead of how do you want to brand yourself. And I wish I had thought of this even earlier, like you know. Mm -hmm. When I came out of college, I wasn't even thinking about it. We didn't really have a lot of social media when I was coming out of college. You know, I'm, I'm a little older, so. Um, <laughs> but you can see, you know, I'm a little older. But, um, you know, just knowing ahead of, I want to do this in the future. This is where I want to go, you know. Yeah. So you can almost pretty much act ahead of time. I'm a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. I'm a, 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 a product developer. I'm a lifestyle brand before it even happens, you know, because yeah. you need to build up something and, and have that. Uh, um, connection already kind of flowing and going so that when that once in a lifetime opportunity is placed in front of you, you're ready to go. No yeah. one literally has time to say, wow, I want to do a deal with you. Let me see what you have. Or let me see what you're about. Yeah, uh, you I'll get back ready. to you. I'll get back to you. Give me some time. Nope. Yeah, you have to, you so be, be prepared. Ready. Perfect what you're doing to all the creatives, the artists. Perfect what you're doing. Do your research. Look around at the right companies too. Like mm -hmm. if you literally have interest in a certain watch brand or a certain company, whatever it is, or certain uh, publisher, you know, do some research, look at how your artwork or whatever it is you do might even fit in with that specific company. It might be exactly. another company that's a better fit. So exactly. yeah, yeah. Hope that's, I hope that's good advice. No, that definitely is good advice, especially, well, everything that you said was definitely good advice, but especially the part of just like showing oh my <laughs> what you have. Like, as I told you before, I was rearranging art in my home this weekend. And I just literally thought to myself, like all of this talent has just been in my house. Just sitting there. <laughs> and I just felt like literally deep down in my spirit, like you can't just keep your talent in your home. Right. <laughs> you know what I see, mean? See, a lot of it, see one so, thing about anything, any, any musician, any rapper, any mm -hmm. <laughs> poet, any actor, any, artists the confidence first of all of saying what i have other people need to see it you know mm -hmm. that's that's kind of first like the mindset it's not about being like bold and cocky and you know uh over the top no it's about 
what I what I'm doing, what I have inside of me, other people, the world needs to see this. So mm-hmm. it kind of starts there. You know, that's Absolutely. where it starts. Yeah. You know, I still try to stay grounded. I try to stay humble with everything because I know that it's so much out there and just people and artists and designers that are more talented and better, but no one in the world can do what I'm doing. Exactly. Or no one else has these fingertips. Exactly. I tell world. my friends these, you know, all the time, like you yeah. are the magic. You are the magic. Only one. <laughs> the only one that can do what I can do. You're the only one that can do what you can do. So exactly. own that and then, you know, work toward it. And, and, you know, just, you just have to think ahead of making those connections and, you know, being prepared to show it, being prepared to discuss it. You know, you have a lot of creatives that don't like to discuss what they're doing or mm-hmm. describe what they were feeling or, or, you know, that whole other side, you know, if you want to become a lifestyle co- I mean, you had the, mar- you had my meeting greet, right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had to talk to hundreds of people and be ready to drop of a dime to talk to an art buyer or a, a, okay. buy- a purchasing team from this store or that brand or whatever, and just constantly be prepared to discuss my product, my inspiration and all that type of thing. So, that's another side of it. When you enter to enter into that world now, it's you know I'm in my art studio now, so it's no more like separating your studio creating. You transition to thinking of yourself as a brand, you know. Yeah. And I've been a big yeah. dreamer since I was little, so I've already imagined me having my own show on HCTV or Magnolia, whatever it is, and my whole family, which is you know my three kids are very creative. My wife was a travel nurse, but she's still part of the brand and everything. I've already imagined all this type of stuff. And, and so I, I try to think, I try to visualize way ahead and it's constantly dreaming of where I really want things to go and what I really believe is possible. So as you're moving forward, you know, it's not a surprise when something comes that is getting you closer and closer so to that, to that reality. So I love that. Awesome. Thank you. Well, for anybody who's listening, who's like, hey, I need to collaborate with you. I need some of your art. I need some of this lifestyle collection. What are some ways that they can find you online? So I have a web, I have two websites, um, normanwyattjr.com, which is being readjusted now. So please don't judge me on that. <laughs> uh, but then the newest website, since I launched the collection, the, li- the lifestyle brand is normanwyatthome.com. So I'm going to eventually just tie those two together and just make one website. Um, but I can be reached on either one of those if anyone wants to see, you know, some products, some artwork. A lot of my original art, I'm constantly creating new work. And, you know, if you want to reach out to see some new work, um, you can just um, reach out to me on my website and I'll be glad to show you some of the newest work that I've done, which I will be, like I said, I'm going to reinvent the entire website working with a designer now actually so i'll be adding uh, a lot of the new original art um to that website if anyone's interested i've been telling people please purchase an original painting now absolutely the price and is going up the where, value is going up <laughs> well it is more or less like I, i'm starting to see now my time uh my energy is like all over the place now i'm literally on even on a holiday i was designing products mm-hmm. you know try to take a break but i just some ideas came so i had to get it out so yeah, I tell people now, I've been telling people that I know and just Facebook followers and Instagram followers, please purchase original art now because the price points will be rising the more that gets out in the market as Absolutely. as more exposure and as more products and literally becoming, you know, a brand, a, a lifestyle brand. So the creator of the artwork, the prices adjust along with the growth of the artist. Absolutely. Um, also, as far as the style craft products. So at High Point Market, which you were there, that is for the trade. So, you know, at that point, everything was released for the art, for the buyers, the store buyers, uh, anyone that wants to put it out in their, in their um, stores, boutiques, hotels, galleries. Very soon, those style craft will be adding all products online for the, cons- the everyday consumer to purchase. So, Excellent. Um, and it takes a while to upload all the products. Like I said, I got 153. Listen, I already be... have a couple of items um, picked Okay, out. you have some on your list already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they will be on like Overstock, Wayfair, and some of the online stores. So very soon, like it's in the process now. Excellent. Very soon, everyday customer can just purchase and buy all the stuff that's um, currently out. Yeah. Um, you can also go to stylecrafthomecollection.com and go under designers and see my name, Norman White Jr. And then you're able to, to at least see everything that's been released and then you kind of like I said plan like you did 
look yeah. around and know what you want when it's ready to come out. So excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see your continued success. I'm so happy oh, that you. we are now connected. Um, and I'm sure Same everybody here. who's listening to the show will be inspired from everything from you starting um, as a fine artist at eight years old, taking high school classes to yeah. then becoming an art teacher, uh, to continuing on in fine art and painting to now launching this amazing uh, lifestyle collection and really you just scratched the surface and everything that oh, you're about you. to do. So I'm excited. Thank you. I appreciate it. So thank you so much for being a guest on the show. And thanks for inviting me. And so it was so great to meet you at Hopper on Market and just glad to be acquainted. So excellent. Thanks for joining us this week on Thrive in Design. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Thrive in Design. And for more strategies on how your product company can innovate in the interior design industry, head to training.thriveindesign.co. As always, subscribe to the show to catch every new episode and leave us a review so we can continue to create captivating content. See you next week.